going to be doing continuity given the equation, and this is probably going to take us a few days to get through. Okay? So does anybody remember the definition of continuity, like a quick way of explaining it? What was the analogy we used? Right, right. And so it's a little bit harder when you're given the equation because you can't see the graphs. So you don't really know, is there a break or isn't there? So I'm, we're going to have to break this down into different types of functions. Okay? For example, polynomials should always be continuous everywhere. There are no breaks. If you graph x cubed or x squared, you're going to see a continuous graph, so it's going to be um, no break, therefore it's continuous. Now, the actual definition of continuity involves a limit, which is part of the reason why we study the limit so much. So let me go ahead and explain this real quick. This is how we know if a function is continuous. So notice that basically three things have to be equal to each other. The limit from the left, the limit from the right, and the function value. Okay, a shorter way of saying that is that the limit value at C is equal to the function value at C. A lot of times we've already seen in examples we've done, the limit is equal to the function. So if that's true, then it's continuous. Remember, the limit is the y value it's approaching, and the function value is just the point on the graph. So it makes sense. If the limit and the function value are the same, then there can't be a break. If they're different, we talked about jump discontinuity, infinite discontinuity, removable, and one-sided. In those cases, the limits are not equal to the function value. All right, the easiest one I just talked about, if it's a polynomial, okay, the answer is going to be it's continuous everywhere, okay? There is no discontinuity for a polynomial. Does anybody from calculus want to explain how do you know if something's polynomial? Like, how do you just look at it? Okay, the, the exponents have to be whole numbers, right? So they can't be negative and they can't be decimals. Um, it's not going to be a fraction, right? That's a rational function. That's not a polynomial. Certainly doesn't involve trig functions. It doesn't involve variables in the exponents, which is exponential. And so pretty much it's kind of like a normal function or equation you would see in like an Algebra 2 class or something. So as long as you can identify it's a polynomial, then guess what? It's going to be continuous everywhere. And you don't have to write all these down. Okay, this, this is pretty simple stuff. Is this a polynomial? It is. You were probably looking at the coefficient, right? For a polynomial, the coefficient can be anything. What we're going to look at is the exponents. As long as the exponents are whole numbers, then it's a polynomial, okay? So we can answer this question. What do you think? Is it continuous at x equals negative 45? Yeah, it's going to be continuous everywhere because it's a polynomial. Polynomials are continuous all real numbers. Explanation. Yes, all you have to do is identify it's a polynomial. Since it's continuous everywhere, certainly it's going to be continuous at x equals negative 45. It could be continuous at x equals 0 or anywhere else. Okay, I want to show you guys an example of what the function would look like. This is just a polynomial. This is 1 ninth x to the third. If you notice that if you drag this point on the function, okay, there are no breaks, right? So it works for all func all polynomial functions in the fact that there will be no break. The point will go without having to warp or anything like that. I can even take, I can kind of adjust this function a little bit. You can kind of see different polynomials take place here, but what do you notice about all of these? As weird as the function looks, okay, there are not going to be there. Are, there will not be any breaks in the function itself. It will always be continuous. Okay. Next rule I wanted you to look at is exponential functions, and just like polynomials, it's going to be continuous everywhere.
let's take a look at some exponential functions and what they look like on the graph. Okay, so again, this, this is just a point 0.1 to the x, but notice there's not going to be a break in the graph at all, okay? And I can adjust the base to whatever I want it to be, and there's never going to be a break in that function as long as it's a positive base. Okay? So for all, poly for all exponential functions, the continuity is all real numbers for that. Here's an example, pi to the x. Again, all you have to do is look at it and say, oh, well, this is a exponential function. Pi is positive. And it says, I mean, we can, we can choose a number. Is it continuous at, I don't know, let's say x equals negative 7? The answer is going to be yes. Okay? For any x value you plug in, it'll be continuous for the simple fact that that the curve has no break. So the answer is yes. Okay, so the third function are rational functions. These functions do have discontinuity. Think about it. A lot of rational functions have asymptotes. So obviously there's a break there. And so basically what you have to do is you have to figure out what the vertical asymptotes are, which is when the denominator equals zero. You can't divide by zero, so there's going to be a break in the graph there, and it's going to be discontinuous there. So let's take a look at an example. We have 6x squared minus 3x plus 7 on top and 8x cubed minus 27 on the bottom. Whenever you see a rational function, I'm going to be very clear about this, that really won't matter. Okay, the top really won't matter. What you're really going to key in on is the bottom. The bottom is what makes it discontinuous. Okay, you're just going to set it equal to zero and solve and that will tell you where it's discontinuous, okay? So I'm going to take 8x cubed minus 27, set it equal to 0. Now, believe it or not, this one's actually easier than it looks. You don't have to do difference of cubes. You can just add 27 to both sides and then divide by 8 and then take the cube root. And I'll give you a second to get this copied. All right, so you're going to add 27 to both sides and then divide by 8. And then once you do that, you take the cube root of both sides to get rid of the x cubed. Cube root of 27 is 3. Cube root of 8 is 2. So it's discontinuous at x equals 3 halves or at x equals 1.5. Once you figure out where it's discontinuous, you'll know it's continuous everywhere else. Okay. Again, the bottom is the only thing that's going to influence a, a uh, normal rational function. So everywhere but x is going to be, uh, at x equals 1.5, it's going to be continuous. I'm going to show you the graph of this one as well. So I don't have the actual graph of that example, but I will show you kind of what this looks like. So look at 1 over x. If we set x equal to 0, we can see that at x equals 0, there's a jump, right? In fact, infinite discontinuity. In other words, there's a break in the graph. And if I, I can randomize this and make some other random function, if we were to set that bottom equal to 0, we would see there's a discontinuity here. One right there, there's an asymptote, and then there's a huge gap between here and there. But the point is, it all has to do with the bottom of that fraction. Wherever that's equal to zero, there's going to be an asymptote or a hole, which is discon discontinuity. That is another point to make. Like, it could be a hole. Whenever the top and bottom are both zero, there's a hole. But either way, it's still discontinuous.